Okay, so welcome everybody to a new episode and a nice talk with Under Itan, where we uh, meet inspiring people uh, here in Sweden, uh, but also some international icons, if you will. And uh, today I am uh, certainly honored to have uh, one of these international figures with me, Mohammed Jun. Thank welcome you. Welcome to Sweden. Thank you very much. Thank you for talk. giving me this opportunity. Sure, uh, it's a pleasure to have you. Um, most people here in Sweden, probably, hopefully people all over the world who watch this, but uh, here in Sweden we probably know you most for winning the Nobel uh, Peace Prize in 2006. That's true. Uh, and uh, you're just the founder for Grameen Bank uh, some years ago now. And a big, uh, Almost 40 years now. 40 years now. How about that? But uh, besides those that maybe most people have heard of, uh, who is Mohammed Yunus? <laughs> Tell us. Uh, where do you come well, from? Uh, I'm from Bangladesh. Yeah. Uh, I was an economics teacher. Yeah. And accidentally got involved with doing things with the poor people because of the terrible situation in the country of hunger and famine, yeah. people dying of hunger. Yeah. So I was trying to see if I can make myself useful to people in some way. Because theoretical economics doesn't show me any path. So I thought these are kind of fairy tales, which has nothing to do with people's lives. So I wanted to be, as a person, useful to another person. That's all I wanted to do. And that was the beginning. And I was trying to fight the loan sharks in the village yeah. by lending money myself out of my own pocket. Yeah. And that grew, became very successful. We created the bank, started in 1976. And later on, we developed it as a formal bank in 1983. Yeah. And this idea of lending money to the poor people, particularly poor women, without any collateral for income generating activity, became known as microcredit. And gradually, this became a nationwide program. Then it became a worldwide program. Today, everywhere you go, there's microcredit program. So this is one reason people know kind of recognize me through that microcredit connection. Along the way, I also created uh, many types of businesses to solve people's problem. I see lots of huge problems, but remains unattended. So I tried to attempt to solve that in my own way, tiny way, not a big mega nationwide, just a tiny way in one little village, one little city and so on. And this became a strange kind of business because this business doesn't aim to make money for the donors. So it's a dedicated to solving problems. Yeah. And I started calling them social business, yeah. non-dividend company to solve human problems. Yeah. Usually you try to solve people's problem by philanthropy. You give money yeah. and solve the problem. Yeah. But the philanthropy has a limitation. Yeah. Philanthropy money goes out does the work, good work, but the money doesn't come back. So you have only one time use of your money and very limited impact. So what I did, I took the objectives of philanthropy, put a business engine behind it and call it social business. Then I address the same objective of the philanthropy with the business method, money comes back. So philanthropy money has one life, social business money has endless life because it keeps recycling, so it becomes very powerful. So that's the area that I've been doing and people are getting more and more interested. Uh, we now have many friends in uh, Sweden who are interested in it. They want to have joint ventures with us as a social business. So we are discussing these issues well, during my visit. I have been visiting here and many are very enthusiastic about uh, creating social business in Sweden to solve problems in Sweden. Like yesterday, I was talking in Malmö about the beggar problem beggars of the street, yeah, people coming from outside, started begging. Yeah. Yeah. And we have done something about beggars in Bangladesh. There's a, many, many beggars in Bangladesh. What we do, we tell them that as you go begging from house to house, yeah. why don't you carry something to sell along with it? So people have two options, whether they want to give something free, some food, some money, or buy something from you. So either way, you are a benefici beneficiary. And we give the money to you so that you can buy the stuff and sell it. 
And they started taking the money as a loan and started the business and became very successful in selling Dr. Joe things. So I said, this is our concrete experience, you can share it. And also we consider all human beings as entrepreneurs. Even a beggar is an entrepreneur. They have showed it in hundreds of times, thousands of times. Uh, they can do that. We had uh, more than 100,000 beggars in our program and they do very successfully work it out. I said, this could be the beggars you see on the street. If you kind of uh, scratch them, you'll find out a great entrepreneur inside. Mm -hmm. So how to unleash that capacity, make them into entrepreneurs rather than just throw some coins into their pot. But uh, something very important to do that. So this is what we're doing. As we uh, heard you say, every individual is a, is a powerhouse. It's a powerhouse, uh, unlimited capacity, unlimited yeah. creative power. I yeah. say, look at the unemployment of the young people all over Europe. In some countries, it's amazingly high. Like in Spain, 48% of the young people are un unemployed. In Greece, probably 70% of the young people are unemployed, and so on. It's a shame. In a prosperous countries in Europe, young people have nothing to do. I said it's a shame because the very concept is wrong, unemployment and employment issue. Because people are not born to work for somebody else. But that's how we have pushed people to our education system, to our thinking, to our policy that everybody has to have a job. If you don't have a job, it's a shocking thing. Oh my God, you don't have a job. What happened to you? As if it's your, your fault. It's not your fault. System couldn't find a spot for me. It's not me. And for the first time, uh, for the first question is, why should I be looking for a job? Who told me that I have to look for a job? It's a wrong message. Human beings are not job seekers. They are job creators. They are problem solvers. They are go-getter. That's our history says. When we're in the caves, we're not sending job applications at all. We just went out and get things done. That's our history. But suddenly in recent years, in a couple of centuries and so on, you say, no, no, you have to have a job. This is the wrong direction. It's a distortion of human life. So I said, all young people should be ready to start their own life as an entrepreneur. And that's what it should be. So the idea of all Unemployment is a kind of absurd proposition. Why an active, creative human being remain under a spell that I can't do anything, I can't lift my hand, I cannot think anymore, my, it's, my mind is frozen. It doesn't have, it's, it shouldn't be that way. And you already made, made the distinction here by, uh, between problem solving and, yeah. and money making. Sure. I guess capitalism has a role there, and, yeah. but the idea you present here is that you can uh, solve real problems that the world needs sure. you to solve, Absolutely. but actually make money in doing it. So, uh, Two things. Yeah. One, you can make money. Yeah. Your mind is making money, then you are in the money-making world. Mm -hmm. When you come to social business, you depart from money-making world. The first thing you say, I'm not going to make money. I'm going to solve problems. Mm -hmm. So there, the whole idea of money-making is off. Okay. It's a disconnected from personal profit making company that I create as a social business, they make money. Company makes money. Yeah. I don't take money. Exactly. I take the money from the company, yeah. the amount that I invested, yeah. I get it back. Yeah. But after that, I don't take a penny yeah. as a penny, as a dividend. That's why I defined it as a non-dividend company yeah. to solve human problems. Yeah. So this is a different category of yeah. business. There's a one money-making world of business, and there's another big world of business, which is a social business, which yeah. is a based on selflessness. One is based on selfishness, another is based on selflessness. These are the two things. They can work parallelly. There's no conflict with them. As a human being, I can do two businesses. One, to make money for myself, another to solve people's problem without any interest of making money out of the business. So this is what I'm promoting, this is what I'm creating. And once you go into that, whole world opens up in front of you. All this problem now becomes solvable. I bring technology, I bring creative power, mm -hmm. I bring everything to make the solution possible for the problems that I see in front of me through social business. And I think I know the answer to this uh, question. Actually, Go ahead. what, 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 Try it. what? Uh, let's see. Uh, what actually? Uh, what triggered this in you? So you have this sort of. You're in in the element, as someone would say. You found your essence in life, and what what you want to. I was just explaining to you how we got into the microcredit. I was yeah. a teacher teaching yeah. economics, found out this theory is not, that doesn't help anybody. So I wanted to go out and be with the people to see as a human being if I can make myself useful to another human, one more human being, not everybody in the world, just one more human being. 
I said, that way I'll feed them kind of meaning in my life that I'm useful to somebody. Otherwise, it makes, sense, makes no sense. Why am I here? Just to take care of myself? That's too narrow an ambition for anybody. So I wanted to relate myself to one more person. In the process, I related to many more persons by doing little things for this, little for them, them. Just tiny thing, one person. Every time, one person. Then I discovered the loan sharking in the village. And they are extracted, they are exploited by the people who are lending money. So I wanted to protect them from the loan sharking. So one idea came, why don't I lend the money myself? If I lend the money myself, they don't have to go to loan shark, the problem is solved. So I started lending money myself out of my own money, out of my own pocket. And that was the beginning. So that kind of propelled me. The more I see people are happy doing that, and that touches me that I'm making people happy. And I continue to do that, and it worked. Everybody said, it won't work, it will collapse very soon. It may work for a few months, few years, but it will collapse, it never collapsed. I said, I'll continue until it collapses. So I will not stop just because you're telling me that it will collapse. I said, well, I will figure out, I'll find out what is the point where it will collapse. And that day I said, okay, now I find a place where it collapsed. Then I will try to probably find out how to get it over again. But until the, but it never collapsed, it flourished, it has spread all over the country. Today, Grameen Bank, the bank that I created in Bangladesh, has eight and a half million borrowers. Nearly all of them are women, 97% women. They own the bank. It's their bank. And they take the deposit from the other people and lend the money to the poor people in the villages. So it's not a bank which takes money from outside and lend money to the people. It's just inside. All the money is generated inside. It's not dependent on donor money. It's not dependent on government money. It's not dependent on any bank's money, nothing. So it creates its own money, it creates by deposit and lend people money, and flourishes. How well, uh, I mean, it's a beautiful day here in Gothenburg today. Uh, a lot of things, great things are happening uh, around the world. I mean, 2015 is also a little bit of a key year, year in many ways. Sure. And it's above uh, and uh, the UN coming up very shortly, and then Paris in, in, uh, in December. Mm -hmm. So what do you think? This key year. What, what is the state? Are we moving into a more conscious very, very uh, significant world? year. Yeah. 2015 is a very significant year because this is the end of the MDG, Millennium Development Goal. Mm -hmm. So you do the stock taking, how, how much you have achieved. And luckily, Bangladesh achieved most of those MDGs. Almost out of the eight, probably six of them will be done, two will be very close. We'll do it beyond 2015 in the next one or two years. Uh, we have achieved the Millennium Development Goal number one, reducing poverty by half by 2015, but we have done it two and a half years before the 2015, in the middle of 2013. So yeah. that's a great excitement yeah. that we have done sure. So yeah. we now look forward to the next goal. Yeah. Uh, so this is an important year, it's a conclusion of the Millennium Development Goal, terminal year, and also it's the beginning of the next 15 years goal, which is known as SDGs, Sustainable Development Goals. There are 17 goals with 169 targets for that. Excellent goals. Yeah. So this is the beginning, the end of 2015 will be the beginning of the SDGs until the 2030. I kind of shortened the whole thing. I put myself in front of me three zeros. Mm -hmm. Zero number one, we want to create a world with the zero poverty. Not a single person in the world will be a poor person. And I keep saying poverty should be in the museum after that. Nobody should see any person in the whole world as a poor person, and it's achievable. Yeah. If Bangladesh can reduce it by half, it can easily reduce it by zero to get to the zero in 2030. Sure. So that's what we'll do. So my zero, number one, is to reduce poverty globally so that nothing, nobody in the world is a poor person, no matter which country you are in. Yeah. Second zero, no unemployment. Because unemployment, as I said, is an artificial issue, artificial design to distort human being, this is a distortion of human being. So I will undo that distortion, I will full, I will rediscover the full human being, who is capable, creative, and problem solving, and go-getters, and full of creative power, so that nobody will be an unemployed person. Because this natural thing for a human being is to take care of himself and take care of the rest of the world. That's the natural thing for a human being. Not be dependent on somebody else's decision to make a life living in this planet. 
So I would like to achieve that to zero public, uh, zero unemployment by 2050 for the whole world. And the, and the zero, zero net emission. net emission. So that it, it will be a carbon free world. That's a zero. Uh, decarbonized world, so that we have a world which is safe, because is the way world we created for our own uh, mistakes, uh, which is on the path of the self-destruction. So this is what we want to protect. We want to protect the planet and also protect the people. So these three zeros by 2050, that's a shortcut of the world that we want to create, and we, we bring social business behind it, so that we can achieve it. And we see that the power of technology in the world is becoming bigger and bigger. We want to put all the power of technology to achieve these three goals. And the power of the young people. Young people is a fantastic powerhouse. This generation of young people is way different from the young generation of our own age. Because we didn't have the technology in our hands. This young generation was born with powerful technology in their hands. If they put their mind into it, and use this technology to address all these problems, these problems can be resolved very quickly. So the power of the young people, power of technology, and the power of social business. And then add the protection of the human rights and good governance. If you put all four together, we can achieve all those very quickly. What else then for us? I mean, we have a couple of thousand people, that probably young people, entrepreneurs, but also CEOs of big companies here in Sweden and beyond who watch these talks, uh, what can we do then? Because these are, I mean, I love these three goals and let's sure. uh, let's fight uh, sure. as much as we can Absolutely. to reach it by 2030. Absolutely. But uh, what what can we do? Just some first, thoughts. First of all, to uh, get in touch with each other. Yeah. Uh, we hold conventions every year. Uh, this year, we call it, uh, in general, we call it Social Business Summit. Mm -hmm. This year, we'll have it in Berlin. Uh, November 4, 5, and 6. Yeah. We invite you to come to Berlin yeah. so that you can see what's happening around the world in social business, how they're solving problems, and why people do it uh, as a business, not to make money for themselves, sure. what propels them, what inspires them to do that, yeah. who are these people, so you get to know them, yeah. number one. And anybody can do social business. Yeah. You could be student, you could be a young person, just come out with a business idea yeah. to solve a problem. Yeah. And that's it. The idea is the most powerful thing. It's not the money, it's the idea. And you have it, young people have it. You may not have the money to do big things, but you have the idea to do mega things. But start with a very small idea, a small implementation idea. Take the big problem, but solve a small piece of that problem. Once you know how to solve a small piece, you repeat it, big problem is dissolved, completely solved. So if the, you are in a business, let's talk together how to create a joint venture with us, so that we can guide you how to do that, and you have the idea how to do it, let's work together, make it happen, and becomes a an instance for everybody else. So any business person, whether you have a small business, a medium business, or a large business, you're a company CEO, or you're the owner of the company, whoever, we can work together to create social businesses right here in Sweden. The problems that you see around it, you don't have to go all the way to Bangladesh to solve it. You start solving here. Once you know how to solve it here, you know it's solved anywhere in the world because it's the same same problem. Poverty is the same problem. Drug is the same problem. Unemployment is the same problem. Welfare is the same problem. So if you know how to take five welfare people out of welfare by creating a social business, then you do open the door for take all, everybody in welfare out of welfare, be a decent, productive human beings. Mohammed, great pleasure to meet it's you. It's my pleasure. Thank, Thank you for you. the talk. Thank you. Good luck. Continue Thank to you. propel the world in uh, in great ways, and uh, you guys help us out. Thank Let's you. Uh, create more. We can work together. Go get her some problem solvers. Thanks. Let's do it. Take care. Bye bye.